Jessica Boyer with your SCV News Break for Tuesday, April 19th. The parents of a man killed in a deputy-involved shooting in Canyon Country have filed a civil rights lawsuit against the County of Los Angeles and the Sheriff's Department. Miguel Hernandez and Anna Hernandez alleged that the unidentified deputy who shot their 39-year-old son, Miguel Hernandez, on January 14th following a traffic stop violated his and his family members' 4th and 14th Amendment protections. The incident occurred around 7.50 in the evening near Shangri-La Drive and Nathan Hill Drive. According to a news release by LASD, a deputy saw a vehicle that matched the description from an assault with a deadly weapon call the previous day in Newhall. The deputy conducted a traffic stop on the vehicle. As soon as the vehicle came to a stop, the driver allegedly quickly exited the vehicle and started yelling profanities at the deputy while appearing to challenge the deputy to a fight. The deputy gave commands and the driver refused to comply. The driver allegedly turned his body and aggressively reached behind his back, appearing to retrieve a weapon and began to draw the possible weapon on the deputy. The suit argues against some of the details presented in the news release. The civil suit also notes that the parents are Hispanic and accuses the deputy of using unreasonable, unjustified force and violence causing injuries which resulted in their son's death. Hernandez's parents are seeking compensation for their grief, emotional distress, pain and suffering, and their loss of comfort in society and support. The City of Santa Clarita is hosting an open house Wednesday night for residents to share their feedback about the future of pedestrian and bicycle trails between the Saugus community and the Santa Clara River Trail system. The event will be held from 6 to 8 p.m. at Highlands Elementary School in the Multipurpose Room. Residents are invited to drop in any time to learn about existing trail plans and ask city staff members any questions they may have. Resident feedback is highly encouraged. Coming up, take a trip into space with a JPL project manager and former SCV resident. Plus, the Out West Concert Series and Cowboy Festival are coming up this week. Stay tuned. So, I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already! You're making me nervous! Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Hey George, there's breaking news. AM 1220 KHTS, I'm George Cummings with breaking news here in the Santa Clarita Valley. It turns out we have an emergency situation Let's going go. on. Ready in five, four, Breaking news from the Santa Clarita Valley. There's an emergency situation happening in Saugus right now, and our news crew is on the scene for more information. Welcome back, I'm Jessica Boyer. It's a cold, distant moon for a planet that's 365 million miles away from Earth, but the science community is eager to get as close as they can to it. We sat down with project manager and former SCV resident Barry Goldstein to not only find out why the science community wants to go to this icy moon, but also how they're trying to get there. For the past 20 years, exploration of one of Jupiter's moons, Europa, has been the number one priority of the science community. The scientists have considered Europa probably the most likely place in our solar system other than Earth that there might be life, actually not just evidence of past life that we've been looking, uh, been doing a significant number of missions to Mars for, but actually life that may exist today. A lot of the reasons for that have to do with the conditions of Europa as it orbits around Jupiter. It basically has a lot of the constituents that one would find in various parts of Earth where life may have actually evolved in the beginning. Europa looks like nothing more than an icy shell, cracked and battered from millions of years of time spent in space. But below that icy shell, scientists believe there is a salty ocean, much like the one we have here at home. And even further below that ocean is very likely a molten or volcanic core. What the best, the best evidence we have would be that life is possibly evolved in the oceans. It's clear that life, at least life as we know it, I should basically preface by saying life as we know it, 
the best uh, assessment we have is that the conditions for life evolving in Europa exist, however they don't exist at the surface. That ice is actually being bombarded by electrons and so it's generating what's called oxidants. So you have oxidants mixing from the surface into the ocean, reductants coming out of the ocean floor, those minerals that are pumping out through sub ocean vents, much like on Earth that we see at the Mariana Trench and other places, mixing in, and biologists, of which I am not, believe that uh, that is really how life evolved and started here on Earth, is through that redox potential in the ocean floor. Scientists are hypothesizing this based off of imagery they got from their previous mission, the Galileo mission, and the Hubble telescope, where they detected water vapor coming off of Europa's surface. It can be seen here in this image taken by the Hubble telescope in 2012. While these are surface images, the reason why they wouldn't expect to see life on the surface is because of a huge radiation field coming off of Jupiter. Much like we wouldn't want to sit under an x-ray machine all day, uh, you know, 24-7, years after year, we wouldn't exactly survive. So we don't anticipate that life would be surviving on the surface. However, all we'd have to do, according to what the scientists tell us, is get maybe 10 centimeters below that ice shell, and you're basically shielded from that radiation. And then all those other conditions that I talked about take, take play, and life could probably possibly evolve in the past and may be there right now. While these hypotheses have excited scientists for years, it's the roadmap to the actual journey that has posed its own set of difficult problems. You might say, well, why haven't we gone yet, right? Why are after 20 years of seeing it's the highest priority. And the reason is quite simple, it's prohibitively expensive cost. And what drives that cost uh, basically is the ability to really get a compelling science payload into orbit around Europa because every concept that we had to explore the moon basically went into orbit around Jupiter and then subsequently would go into orbit around Europa and when in orbit around Europa we'd be doing the investigation and basically sending the um, the data down to Earth. Now, as I mentioned, there's two problems. As I mentioned, the radiation field in the orbit around Europa is intense, so it wouldn't only hurt life on the surface, it hurts spacecraft that are in orbit around Europa. Luckily for us, that radiation field attenuates as you go further out away from the uh, center of Jupiter. And we have, now have a concept that actually, instead of goes into, going into orbit around Europa, actually goes into orbit around Jupiter and instead of subsequently going into orbit around Europa, now it just continues to do iterative flybys of Europa. So it goes by, changes its attitude a little bit, goes by again, effectively building up a coverage map over a period of time that basically gives us the same um, investigation capability we would if we had gone into orbit. We're constantly collecting data and pumping it back down to Earth or telemetering it, as we say, back down to Earth so the data comes down as quickly as we can send it and, and collect it. And by virtue of that, we have a buffer that's holding the data on the spacecraft that has to be sized, and we're limited by the number of, the number of bits we can send down. We also have to constantly be pointing the spacecraft to Earth. So that's a real-time configuration. In this new architecture where we're looping around Jupiter, we spend notionally about a half a day flying by Europa, and then approximately another 13 and a half days looping around Jupiter. Well, we can telemeter the data da back down to Earth during that 13 and a half days. That, that change enabled us to actually get five times as many bits, or science, I should say, back down to Earth. So we cut the cost of the mission, but we also increased the science return by a factor of five. While the mission itself isn't set to take off until at least May or June in 2022, the excitement surrounding it and the possibility of an entirely new and historical discovery leaves the door open for a bright new future of space exploration. The thing that excites me is, is the youth and how excited they get by, I mean, I can just go back to the nerd I was as a kid, or still am. Um, <laughs> It, the fact that they get excited by the fact that we're doing things that haven't been done before and what it really, I hope, generates is the next generation of scientists, engineers. I think we need more of that in this country. I uh, sometimes worry about that and I hope that the missions that we do here at JPL help, and at APL help spur more of that in the country. So to me, that's the biggest, that's the biggest game. For SCV-TV, I'm Patricia Silva.
Sid Masters and the Swing Riders are set to perform for the first time in the SCV TV Presents the Out West Concert Series and are also kicking off the 2016 Santa Clarita Cowboy Festival this Wednesday. Laughs and toe tapping come with these vintage cowboy swing sounds that appeal to all ages. They are serious musicians with a seriously great time, presenting music from the old days when cowboys sang songs about the ups and downs and heartaches of life. The Cowboy Festival kicks off this week with Film Ranch Tours, the Walk of Western Stars induction ceremony, a movie night, performances, and more. For more information about the 2016 Cowboy Festival, go to cowboyfestival.org. Now turning to weather, Tuesday was sunny with a high of 89. Lows are expected to drop to 53 and expect cold wind gusts up to 25 miles an hour. Wednesday is expected to be sunny with temperatures in the mid-80s and overnight lows reaching 52. Thursday will be mostly sunny and stay in the mid-80s, but clouds are expected to roll in overnight and bring a 30% chance of rain Friday. That's all for your SCV News Break. For more local news, you can log on to hometownstation.com or scvnews.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Jessica Boyer.